Yes, you're right. It is a sign. I agree. Yeah. Fact is, it's just a sign. Whoa! All right, guys, listen to me. Belief doesn't just happen because you hang something up on a wall. All right? It comes from in here, you know? And up here, down here. Only problem is we all got so much junk floating through us, a lot of times we end up getting in our own way. You know, crap like envy or fear. Shame. I don't want to mess around with that shit anymore. You know what I mean? Do you? No, 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 coach. No. Do you? No. No. No, me neither. Hell no. Now, you know what I want to mess around with? The belief that I matter, you know? Regardless of what I do or don't achieve or the belief that we all deserve to be loved. Whether we've been hurt, or maybe we've hurt somebody else. Or what about the belief of hope? Yeah, that's what I wanna mess with. Believing that things can get better, that I can get better, that we will get better. Oh man, to believe in yourself, to believe in one another, man, that's, that's fundamental to being alive. And look, yo, hey, if you can do that, if each of you can truly do that, can't nobody rip that apart. Hello and welcome to this What Do You Want to Watch spoiler cast for the third season of the Emmy Award winning Apple TV Plus show, Ted Lasso. I'm your host, Ashley Hubbley. Joining me today, Dylan Blight. Believe. I certainly do. It's number four. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're here at the end of the third season, question mark. Um, and yeah, talking about one of our favorite shows. So let's just jump into it. So please be aware we'll be freely discussing anything and everything about plot themes at ending of the season. So if you haven't watched it, come back later. With that said, let's jump to our discussion of Ted Lasso Season 3. Developed by Jason Sudeikis, Bill Lawrence, Brendan Hunt, Joe Kelly, based on format and characters from NBC Sports, starring Jason Sudeikis, Hannah Waddingham, Jeremy Swift, Phil Dunster, Brett Goldstein, Brendan Hunt, Nick Mohammed, Juno Temple, Sarah Niles, Anthony Head, Tohib Jimmo, uh, Christo Fernandez, Cola Bikini, Billy Harris, and James Lance. Ted Lasso enters his third year as manager of Richmond AFC, having successfully returned the team to the Premier League, but a relegation battle looms. Nate is turning up the heat at his new job at West Ham, and Ted begins to ponder his future in England. Dylan, what are your thoughts on Season 3 of Ted Lasso? I This has been an interesting one. Obviously, we've been discussing it as the season airs, uh, I think off and on, what do you want to watch? But the... The thing is, this season, I'm full agreement with some of the the criticisms about. It. It's just got some very like, at times on the nose, sort of corny writing, and sort of you're like, yeah, whatever. But ultimately, how I felt about this season, even before the the final episode, was I was really in it for the majority of the cut. Car- <laughs> the character stories that were happening. Like, basic. well, I was really invested in most of the character stories. The character who was least interesting this season was Ted. That's the, mm. that's the, 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 the way the cookie crumb, crumbled on his own show. He became the least interesting character. Um, and I think they sort of ran out of things to do with him. However, every other character on the show, I was still interested in. I didn't love the, like, season one, This sh- I swear this was a half-hour show. And suddenly every episode of the show suddenly started being like an hour 15. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sometimes unnecessarily, I felt. So, like, so, so I'm looking at Wikipedia. The run times for season one, 29 to 33 minutes. Run times yeah. for season two, 30 to 49 minutes. 
Uh, season three, 43 to 78 minutes. Yeah, that, yeah. So that I didn't love. I definitely feel like there was a little bit too much stuff chuffed, chucked into this final season, as much as I enjoyed most of it. Even to the point that I'm like, what, was this all just chucked in so we could, you know, put a lock and key and like, this is really Ted Lasso season three and four and like, yep, we're done now. See you later. But the fact that they're, even in all the Apple press releases, they're like, Season three finale, you know, like the wording is very much like season three, season three, season three finale, not sh- the, the finale or Ted Lasso is not coming back or, you know, all, all these sorts of things. Very weird. So I don't know if they're waiting to see what the numbers are. It's just yeah, an odd thing that's happening with this. Uh, but I mean, they brought it home in the season finale. I feel like even with my, some complaints about some of the writing and stuff like that, um, the final episode was definitely a a real tearjerker for basically every character. Um, fantastic finish for Ted. I think his arc finished up. Like, there's no reason for him to ever be in the show again, really. Like, that character's... That, that, he had his story. It's it's, And obviously, there's more to him, and I'm sure his life goes on. There could be... There definitely, you could do more with that character, for sure. But what a perfect moment in time to, I think, finish off the Ted Lasso story. So... Yeah, and I, I definitely felt like the finale was really, really good. There was some weird... That fucking wedding scene that was obviously filmed on, like, a fucking green screen was yep. very odd, that shot, which I'm saying people... Again, rightfully, I can't <laughs> back out and make fun of on Twitter because even when I was watching it, I was like, it's on the volume? Or like, what is this? <laughs> so, but yes, I really did enjoy the third season. Yeah, I really enjoyed the third season as well. I don't think it is consistently as good as the first season, which I think is close to... Magic in a Bottle was the first season. So. Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, I enjoyed a lot of the different story arcs, the directions, the, you know, certain characters went. Um, I feel like the criticism I've seen brought up um, that I kind of agree with is a lot of the important moments happen off screen. Mm. You know? Like, Nate quitting his job. And Nate coming back. <laughs> and, of course, Ted telling Rebecca um, he's leaving. Um, like, a lot of key moments kind of happen we don't get to see. Which is fine, I guess, if that's the way you want to do it. But um, mm. kind of being ambiguous and that kind of stuff. Or, oh, well, like, leave it to your imagination exactly how these things played out. Um, but I would... You know, there's certainly storylines here that I feel like felt shortened. The port, most biggest one I feel like is Nate's kind of redemption arc. I don't think it quite landed the way I hoped it would. <laughs> um, and that's especially coming from the point of view where a lot of people like fuck Nate, Nate, Nate can go to hell. Uh, I never don't want him to ever come back at to AFC Richmond at the start of the season. Uh, and then he gets like, fired like in the beard. next. Everyone's yeah. like Beard. Yeah. Everybody's like Beard. Uh, and then one episode after he's fired, all the Richmond players are like, who at last time they talked about Nate or saw Nate rip the poster or the sign, they like wanted to kill everybody associated with his team. Um, mm. They're like, hey, we want you back. Like one, like three days after you be, you quit working at West Ham. It's like that felt kind of rushed. Mm. Uh, and there's a lot of like smaller moments like that. Um, I feel uh, the Keeley storyline this season of her like running her own PR firm. I mean, it was a fun diversion. I feel like it's so much like trying to keep her in the show. <laughs> like, you know, I really the- like Keeley. I actually really like Keeley though as a character. I think Keeley's great, so. but you know, and I love Barbara. <laughs> Barbara, that friendship was nice to see play and out her at the, the end whole- when finally there's some blonde. She's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, man, that's such a that was such a hilarious moment. Um. <laughs> But yeah, the whole Jack relationship, you know, I mean, maybe it's because I'm on the Roy Keeley bandwagon, but uh, you know, that was not the best told storyline, I don't feel like. Um, I feel it was like interesting because if, if that character was just a guy, right, you'd be like, from the outset, you would have just automatically, sh- sh- like straight away, your brain would have gone, okay, rich, fuck boy, white yeah. dude. Like you would have, you would have realized the arc and story that was going, but I guess having it be a female um, in that, that like sort of position of power, it introduced an interesting sort of thing you don't usually see, I guess. 
it's interesting because I feel like her character and also Zava are there to get set up plot points for further down the season. She was introduced purely for the to be the opposing point of view on the sex tape uh, episode. Yeah. Where she was like, you should be ashamed of this. You should be saying sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that kind of stuff. Um, where opposed to uh, Rebecca, who's very supportive, which shouldn't be surprising because obviously she had a similar kind of thing. Like in the second episode, she talks to Keely about uh, being her being photographed topless and that kind of stuff on a yeah. yacht in wherever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like, and then Zava was also introduced, like to from a pure. Uh, they wanted at the end of the season them to be very close to the top of the Premier League, but they also wanted them to suck for a period of time. So they needed to have someone introduced at the start of the season who could keep them competitive, mm. um, and winning games and like up mm. near the top of the table. Um, not to say Zava wasn't enjoyable while he was there, but it was uh, just a joke. Like, but it was, it was a joke and a fun parody of. Uh, Imre Brahimovic, I want to say off the top of my head, uh, who's a big Zatlan Imre Brahimovic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's a well-known footballer. Um, but yeah, how? Yeah, there's a couple of plot points I wanted to hit on. How? Did, what are your feelings on the Nate Redemption story and his like uh, story this season? <laughs> uh, I agree with your criticisms, but I will still say it mostly worked for me. I was very much of the fuck this dude. I hope he dies for like the first three, four episodes. Um, and then as his story progressed, he, the way they slowly dribbled in him, like obviously playing this role and you could tell he wasn't really liking a lot was going over there. Like the, the, the moments of that, that would show throughout every episode for a while. I think they won me over slowly. And then the introduction of his girlfriend and um, like, I think having him, the moment is like the moment that uh what's fuckface's name um the boss like, rupert you know, rupert the moment rupert like says come out and have a drink and he has those girls and then he chooses to leave i think that's the moment where i was sort of like okay right whereas if he had gone ahead and like just played the even more fuckhead character and then they try to do a redemption later i would have been like no no, no, no. no yeah i agree that was obviously a really nice turning point and then you get that full episode of him Dragging his sorrows with his dad uh, or his parents home uh, while the paparazzi are outside his house. Um, yeah. And like even the, the apology letter he leaves for, for Will. You know? Yeah. And who, I definitely who, feel who like. He a very big character this season. Yeah, that's crazy. Weirdly. I think the, the cementing moment is that the beard moment. Oh, so the mo- good. The beard's whole thing and like his story about. Because obviously, the, like, he was the person who was against him most. Like and hated Nate the most. You let and that Judas in here. Yeah, <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, but then when he does that, and he does his whole, you know, like says that he stole from Ted and like all this, like obviously, very like, similar it's ways. again very on the nose, like a sort of t- story about like willing to forgive people and you know, like all these. Mm. That's the thing. Like Ted Lasso, and it, the other part that sort of annoys me with the way people have been reacting to this season is like the first season wasn't always very like Ted is a dumb character, right? So this show has always been rather cartoonish, but mm. a lot of the stuff that people are complaining about, I'm like, okay, but he was always that cartoonish. And this show's always been like sort of about just the simplest of human messages. things about, yeah. yeah, very simple, positive messages. They're not really too in depth. This season tries to touch on some more like bigger topics like sex tapes and um, like um, being gay in a like a a, a big like sport like that and like yeah. stuff like that. But for the most part, this show's always been like just for the most simplistic of messages about like treating people right, willing to forgive people, um, you know, like doing right by others, like the most simple shit. And this was part of it. And his big speech, like definitely, I was like. I feel like they nailed it with that moment to, to forgive Nate. Yeah. That was really cool. Uh, how about the Rebecca storyline this year of this fortune telling uh, prophecy that's kind of had people up in arms all season? Uh, dumb. <laughs> yeah. I've saw people like, what was it? What was it all for? What was the message behind all this? 
It's like the message is fortune tellers are stupid. You should save yeah. your money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if the, the payoff is her bumping into old mate at the end, who just so happens to be a, a fucking pilot, which again, this is a dumb show at times. I'm willing to f- just get past this whole, the coincidence factor of it all. Um, but, but again, we don't really get a payoff for any of that because it just leaves it open. That's not that's a season four or a spin-off show or whatever. Like her finally finding true love again or yes. whatever the, the story is gonna be there. Um but yeah, the re- the rest of her stuff was dumb. I really enjoyed her still as a character, but most of her character stuff I enjoyed was definitely to do with other character stories, not her own. Mm. Um I guess how, how what about the Colin storyline we got this season? Like a lot of the sporting sporting players got a bigger role to play and Colin was probably the one who got the longest arc over this season. Um with him being revealed as gay, I want to say what uh let me have a quick look. 4 episodes in. Mm. Uh and then like the ultimate reveal being revealed like 5 episodes later. I think, again, the story they're trying to tell here is so straightforward and it's hard for me as someone who's just watched a lot more, I guess, LGBTQ-related films and stories with more nuance uh, that this is just so simplistic. But I still don't mind it because this is a very popular show and sports is known or like these, you know, stuff like this is men's locker rooms and stuff like that. Very usually known as, um, can be not to say that this show is ever predated that way, but obviously can be known as like sexist, homophobic sort of areas, not safe spaces for women or non-straight people basically, or non-conforming. Um, so to have a story like that in a show like this, even as simplistic as this one was, I think it still like sends a, uh, ultimately it's sending a good message. Yeah. I think it was really pretty solidly done. Obviously you are, I love the, the re- Trent reveal. Trent was also gay. Uh, you know, um, Trent the was whole... MVP here the season. I mean, yeah. We'll, Biggest ten. we'll talk about Trent in a second. Um, uh, and Face of course you lead. You know, you lead up to that whole scene with uh, Isaac um, losing it at the fan in the crowd, um, you know, and the kind of swerve, the reason Isaac's been upset with Colin is not because uh, he's gay, but because he didn't tell him he was gay, um, yeah. which, you know, again, is a thing you've probably seen done for a lot, a lot but uh, that was really sweetly done. And then, you know, bonding over FIFA and talking about <laughs> how do you have showers if you <laughs> How do, you have show- how do you have showers with all the other guys like standing around? You know, pop them boners all the time. Uh, yeah, obviously Trent Krem like brought in star of the season, smart decision. Um, because you know his fantastic character uh, writing the story of Richmond this season. Um, mm. Yeah, such a great addition to the dynamic of the locker room. Um, one of my favorite jokes of the start of the season is like uh, Roy being upset Trent's in the room and like telling everybody he can't t- mm. talk to him. Danny's like, yeah, like cheering for Trent at one point. And like, everybody stares at him. He's like, no, I mean, fuck off. Trent. <laughs> 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 this is the delivery. Fantastic. Yeah. So thoughts on Trent? Yes. Trent was very good. Uh, really enjoyed his character. Obviously he was a standout in the past two seasons as that sort of, um, not villain, but definitely a, a, a crux on uh, Ted Lasso as a as a like a constant pain in his in his PR world, I guess. Um, and then having him come in the season tell the story and just get involved with that Collins, Colin Angle, and a few other people as well. Um, Diamond Dogs, hearing him just, <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> all that stuff was quite funny. So yeah, really enjoyed his addition to the locker room. Uh, and then Jamie, Jamie kind of stepped up, matured a lot in some regards, uh, and obviously developed a very strong bond with Roy this season. Mm. I did really enjoy their bond. Um, I hate 
the ending though, just the love triangle cliffhanger thing, whatever, just feels dumb to like to have it. I would have much enjoyed if they just like he did. Like, why do you need to just have him move on? Like, it, they could have just done the story. He's young. <laughs> oh no, I just I'm just like he should have just. They could, had such a good angle with Roy training him and becoming like this father figure to him finally, and whatever else. And then they're like, no, nah, actually, love triangle. So. Yeah, especially the two previous episodes, uh, Roy brings him to the Uncle Day thing. Yeah. Um, and he hits on his sister. Yeah. Uh, and then Roy very much kind of implies that he's hitting on his mum. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have another hug for the road. Yeah. Very weird. So, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Any other standout characters from the season? Um... I can't think of anyone. I feel like we've gone over all the the major people. Yeah, I don't know. No. Yeah, I mean, I Sam mean, was enjoyable. Uh, like Ted's mum. Ted's mum, big episode. Big episode. That was a very good episode. I like the casting and everything like that. So that was good. <laughs> yeah, and just the reveal moment of him <laughs> walking down the yeah. street, like, yeah, mum, uh, what are you doing here? Yeah. It's like, yeah, that would be the weirdest thing, you know. Yeah, would be halfway across the country. I mean, yeah, she was it just would backpacking be with a bunch of Australians. Yep, <laughs> law sex. Yep, law sex. As we know, but law. Australians. <laughs> yeah. So, how, what are your feelings on the finale? Because online, a lot of angry people. Mm. I feel like people hate watching this season. Well, yeah. I mean, they either hate watching it, or they were very invested in the Ted Becker ship. Uh, and anything but the Ted Baker ship was going to make them very upset. Got to be very honest. I literally had never heard of this ship until I saw it on Twitter after the season finale. Did not know it was a thing. Did not realize there was any potential chemistry, sexual chemistry between them. Didn't realize that was a thing at all. Got to be honest. Really? I saw a lot of it. And then when I saw the first scene of the finale, I was like, oh man, they're going to be pissed. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> see i thought it was just a funny joke and now it does sound like a fuck you to this ship fan base i guess but it's quite a funny one <laughs> i you, never you, thought there was any yeah no i don't No, care. i didn't either you know no um you know, i thought it was gonna have a sassy because she's great yeah. but yeah she's not into no. long-term relationships if anything you can get back with his ex-wife because her fucking partner is an absolute dipshit I think, I think it's possible. He's a fuckhead. I mean, the way, <laughs> the way we all turned on him during that, the, during the, that the final game? football scene, yeah. Oh, something's going to finally happen. Oh, fuck off. It's like, they're super invested in this game. Yeah. TK. Jesus, just shut up. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it, but I think there have been some fair criticisms of like, uh, there's the scene of uh, Rebecca talking to Ted on the bleachers um, and explaining all the ways that he could possibly stay and like Henry could come and live and Michelle could come and live and he doesn't say anything. A man who she could never get to shut up but kind of not saying anything. I think a lot of people feel like he kind of resigned himself to going when he didn't really want to. No, I think he realized. I I took it as he realized. This all his, like, a lot of his anxieties were built around his family, ultimately. Like, be it his wife being with someone else, like, or not being able to, like, care for his kid or miss mm. his kid and all these sorts of things. And I, I think that, that when his mum finally went off at him about, like, just going home and stuff. Yeah. He was like, they, I mean, they pe- teed it off perfectly at the start of the season. Like, just a conversation of, like, why are you still here? <laughs> why yeah. are you still here? So Why are we still here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, for the most part, it was fantastic. Like, the whole them winning this match, uh, this final match, um, Rupert getting called a wanker. Every, everyone kind of seeing his true colors, in, especially given the way the season played out. Or, like, the way he'd been revered um, in the first season, despite mm. cheating on Rebecca and divorcing her. Like, he was still much beloved by the Richmond faithful, like, at that. Yeah, well, he went dinner. too far when he hit a coach, right? When he hit that yeah, old man. Yeah, pushed him out, knocked his nuts yeah. out of his pants. Yeah. Um, which, again, another callback to this first ep- this finale, so many callbacks to 
so many things. Um, and of yeah, he was nuts coming out of his pants uh, for the world to see. Mm. Not the first time, so no. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so much the match, but like the halftime speech uh, and everybody pulling out their piece of the rip sign. Mm. Uh, one of the emotional highlights of the season, mm, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, and obviously, you know, disappointing that they didn't actually win the title. Um, I mean, they won what I thought they would. You know, they they, they won they, the one the main match. The fact that they then just skip over the next one and they're like Manchester, who have beat them. I'm like, yeah, that adds up. That's fine. <laughs> like, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then obviously you get this scene at the airport or the heartfelt moments. Uh, then Beard realizes he doesn't want to leave. He wants to stay with Jane, which is another thing that really upset Pants. Why? <laughs> like, it's like, oh, they won't have Ted and Rebecca together, but they'll have Beard and Jane together. But they've like literally super been in together. a fucking relationship. And- but they, they're freak, she's t- freaking terrible to him, doing all this, making him do all this weird shit. And like, I don't complain about him. Anything. I think she, that's their. I think. They, I have think a, they have a weird relationship. They have and, a weird, yeah. Yeah. That's them. They're both very much <laughs> into it. And yeah. like. I like when the cleaner both, comes in and they're like, I'll just go do the cooking room. And then you hear run, like, run after. It's like, no, no, they, they, don't go in there. <laughs> no, those robes aren't garbage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, you know, Ted leaves on the airplane, you know, and. Yep. Uh, Saw so someone online complain that that's not a real flight, which again, I don't really care. What, can- London to Kansas City? Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's a one way. I don't think that's a direct flight. I don't um, think that's direct. I totally believe that's not a direct flight, but sometimes the storytelling, it doesn't really matter. So he keeps a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then we get into cuts of like different things happening. Yeah. My question real or a dream? Real. I think it's a dream. That's my call. You know, I think it's ambiguous. It could go, you could interpret it either way, but I think um, it's all real. So what? Real. Sam suddenly is able to get on the the Nigerian national team despite next next Akimbo, year, yes. like like bribing the yep, bribing next everybody. Year he did. Yep. I don't know. I don't That's know. your most unbelievable thing of that whole. Yeah, that's the whole. You're like, that's what everything else you can believe. That part, you're like, no, that's it, dream. Well, I mean, that that kind of sets it up. Like, uh, you know, that's the breaking point. And then the terrible wedding scene, scene, which looks awful and dreamlike. It does look awful, yes. But I think that's not done on purpose. I think it just looks awful. No, I think it's done on purpose, you know. (laughs) Giving too much credit. Yeah. Um, And then Ted wakes up. Interestingly, did you see what book he was reading when he fell asleep? No. Uh, well, yes, I did, but I can't remember now. It's how to change your mind. Okay. <laughs> you know, implying what well, if you actually wanted to go back. Uh, and then the episode ends with him um, teaching Henry soccer. We do yeah. get a, the moment of him getting home and Henry being very excited. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. I mean, I'm happy with him going home. I feel like there's a lot of people who are upset and thought he should have stayed. Uh, the weirdest one is like, he's going home and he's got nobody. He's got no friends. He's only got his mum who's angry at him and his ex-wife. It's like, I'm pretty sure Ted had a life beforehand. And like, I mean, he literally came He's to, a grown adult who can make yeah. friends with literally anybody. I think he's he going to be okay. He came to England with one person. Yes. And like, and now they're like, he can never go home. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no way he'll make any friends. Yeah. You know, what? Yeah, what is he putting? No, there's a lot of people going, fuck this kid. <laughs> Mine. Just leave him. Forget about him, Ted. We want you I to think stay it, here. I think it makes perfect sense. I have nothing against the way. Yeah. Yeah. And then a lot of people like reading into that last shot of Ted, like he looks sad. <laughs> I think he looks sad. I think he looks content. Mm. I agree. So Dylan, my major question, we're getting a season four. I think we're getting more of this show without Ted Lasso. I don't think it's, I think, I think they just continue it and they call it something else. AFC Richmond, something like that. I don't know. I agree. It's just, why do they keep calling it? Why do they call it the season finale? (laughs) 
Don't know. I think that is the thing that kind of threw everybody. I feel like a lot of the social media posts and like posts by the crew have kind of implied that this is the end of Ted Lasso afterwards. But it's weird that it was billed up as a season finale rather than a series I mean, it's the end finale. Of, it's the end of Ted Lasso, I guess. The character. He's dead. Well, no, he's not dead. But yeah, again, why 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 not to put a full stop on this, you know, beforehand? Mm. And it was like very secretive. Of like they were asked beforehand, is this the final season? And that kind yeah. of stuff. I think maybe they're waiting. They were waiting for this season to decide if they want to do more. I think either way, they knew that if they did more, it was never going to have Ted. But they were yeah, waiting. Jason, to... Obviously, Jason today, because yeah. I said previously, he can't. He's done. He, yeah, he didn't want to stay in England away from his yeah. family and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so he's much literally like, like Ted. Ted. Yeah, much like Ted. So, um, holy fuck. Um, the the I think it's super. I I think there's a lot of super interesting storylines still left open that they can do in the next season. And I think the most interesting one to me would just be the the Keeley women's team. <laughs> that's a really interesting. That's a whole bunch of new characters. That's basically a reboot at that stage. Yeah, I mean that could potentially. Yeah, that would be really interesting. Um, I also feel like there's so much potential with that cast. Like you built up a lot of these supporting characters this season. Like you could def they could definitely hold their own show. Um, especially if they're going in the Champions League next season, like them like going over Europe, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. There's lots of potential there. Uh, you could actually cement this Rebecca's relationship. Yeah, just getting it. It might be difficult, like, you know, Brett Goldstein, like very much in demand now. Like, can he come back for another season of a show or is he have to start working out to be Hercules? Um, uh, but yeah, I feel He's- like there's so many fantastic characters around the show that, you know, I'd be disappointed to see them miss out on them anymore. Yeah. I think, I think it's a, I think TV for so long has been like centered on strict rules and the way you can do shows. Mm. I think moving on the main character of a show when their time and their story made sense for them to leave and then refocusing that on a bunch of other characters, including new characters and some old ones would be a, a, like, I think that's, just, just a good idea. It's good as any. I tell you what, Dylan, there was another Bill Lawrence show that uh, had like a seri- season finale in which a character leaves the job that he was at and there's like a massive like uh, flash forward kind of sequence uh, with over a song, you know, and then they came back the- for another season with like a lot of new characters and that kind of thing. So there's what hope. Was what was that? That was Scrubs. <laughs> season eight, not loved, but That's you know, it happened. <laughs> so, you know. This hope. <laughs> okay. Very good. As long as they don't cast Dave Franco, it'll be fine. Because, you know, joke is Dave Franco kills scrubs. Uh, any other final thoughts on Ted Lasso? No, just me. I'm just... Every, I, I'm just you have a waiting. favorite moment from the season. Oh, fuck. Just, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> no. Or a favorite uh, episode or... Uh, fuck it. I mean, season finale, I guess, would be the favorite episode. Favorite moment, that's very hard. I can't think of favorite moment. Yeah, that that is pretty difficult. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did enjoy. I think Mum City is probably my favorite episode. Like, mm. That Jamie gets his big moment in Manchester, um, that kind of stuff. Um, and one of I think you know one of my favorite moments is uh, Sam getting really upset that his restaurant got you know smashed up because he was yeah. talking about shitty immigrant minister. Yeah. And then him hugging his dad and that kind of stuff. That was really beautiful. And then the awkward moment between his dad and Rebecca. Hilarious. <laughs> Lots of really funny moments throughout the entire season. So, um, Also bring up Mum City. I saw people upset that uh, in the finale, Jamie gets back together with his dad. It's like, people are just getting angry at everything. Yeah, I got nothing. All right. Let us know what you thought of Ted Lasso season three. Unless you're upset at ridiculous shit, then keep your thoughts to yourself uh, <laughs> by going to explosion.com slash Twitter or jump to our Discord at explosion.com slash Discord. If you want to help us out here at what do you want to watch, leave us a review on our podcast or on Podchaser, leave us five stars, anything, leave five stars, or just tell people about the show. And if you enjoyed this episode, thought it was with a dollar, 
head on over to our Kofi page at explosion.com slash support. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time, keep watching stuff, I guess. All right, let's bring it in. I know folks like to say, there's no place like home. That's true. Man, there ain't a whole lot of places like AFC Richmond either. Captain. Original free. One, two, three. Free, free, free!